happening everybody? Hey listen, in this video we're going to go over wire tucking. So most of you know what this is, I'm assuming you do. If you don't, wire tucking is when you take the engine, engine bay wire harnesses and run them underneath the fender wells and basically hide them. So the idea is to just get some of the wires out of the engine bay to make it a little bit more presentable when you open the hood and look a little bit less cluttered. So there's a number of things we're going to be doing um, that's going to clean up the engine bay. One of them is, is going to be moving the wires from the inside of the engine to underneath the fender bay or the fender well. And we're going to be pulling some of the sheathing off. The plastic sheathing on mine is kind of crumply and starting to fall apart. So we're going to go ahead and pull that off. You need some electrical tape to wrap it. When you do that, it also takes your diameter of the wire and shrinks it down significantly, which allows you to tuck it a little bit better and it looks a little bit nicer. So let's get to it. First thing we are going to do is work on the passenger side. The passenger side is the easiest side. There's less wires and you don't have to deal with the starter solenoid. You don't have to deal with some of the thicker gauge wires going to your battery. <clears throat> so we're going to start with the passenger side. And let me tell you something else. Um, there is a number of, I guess, degrees on which you can do this. Um, you can do a, like basically a, a mini wire tug or a partial wire tug where you just, you know, clean up the majority of the, the large harness out from under the engine bay, move it to the side of the fenders, and there's also going to, as far as moving the battery to the trunk, which is the battery relocation kit, and doing that also gets the battery out of the engine bay. I'm going to do that as well because I think I'm going to go this far as uh, moving the wires. I'm going to go move the battery as well. That way it gives us a little bit more room and it just looks clean. You open the hood and you really just see engine, and that's what we want. So. So the first thing we're going to do is take off the wheel and the inner fender skirt. Magic. Alright. Hey guys, so this is actually pretty easy, especially on mine since it's missing a whole bunch of uh, <laughs> bolts and stuff. But what I do have is, basically you'll see these tabs, you can't see this, but they'll be like this right here. You'll see these plastic tabs. And sometimes you can just pull on it that to release these tabs out of it. If not, you have a tool. Don't use a wrench, even though that's all I got. They do make a special tool for this. Do as I say, not as I do. There's one over here. And then you'll normally have screws up on it on the fender well. I don't have that on mine. In fact, I can still see black paint on it. That's kind of cool. But I do have a screw here. A screw right there. That bolts up to your uh, lower ground effects. Okay, got another screw down here. You gotta kind of pull it away from the lip like that. Okay, so now that we've got everything off, um, I'm gonna go ahead and show you what I've already done. Now, I'm gonna be honest, if I were to record every single detail of this job, um, it would be days long. So, I'm gonna try to cut this down significantly and do a lot of the work with the camera off and kind of come back and show you what I've done. That way I'm not videotaping um, really mundane stuff of me pulling connectors and pulling wire and all that kind of stuff. So, Anything that's important or anything that I think is significant that would help you out, I'm going to try to show you guys. So let's recap on what I've already done yesterday. Um, so the inner fender well, as you know, comes off. And I showed you earlier how to remove this thing. It's super easy. Oh, let's start from up here. So hey, look at that. So it is nice and clean already. The passenger side is. Driver's side, not so much. The battery has already been moved to the trunk. It's just sitting in the hatch, so it hasn't actually been relocated yet. So on this side of your car, now I know this varies differently between years of Mustangs, but on my 86, I had a wire loom that went up the shock, t uh, shock tower and down here, and it had connections for your um, alternator. And then it also had a main connector that went to your front um, headlight harness. I almost, not, I almost hit my brakes. Oh, good job. 
but I just used to work on that brake. And on top of that, you also had a vacuum line, and you also had a plastic hose that ran down here that goes to your, your basically it's a fuel vapor canister. Fuel vapor canister normally mounts here. I've already removed the vapor canister. And I've cut that wire and pulled it pulled it through here. Now when you do that, you're going to get some fumes in the garage when it sits a long time because the purpose of the vapor canister is to suck vapors from the fuel tank into a charcoal canister and it helps keep the fumes and it just basically, I don't know, turns the fumes into something magical, water or something, I don't know. So basically all, I've, all I have done is I've disconnected the main cable that goes to the headlight harness and I'll show you that it's a yellow cable on my car and I've disconnected the alternator. Once that's done, all I did was pull the wire and stick it through the hole right there and you can see it, yeah there you go. So you can see the yellow cable which is right here and that's a main power wire I believe to the headlight. It could go to the alternator, not sure, I think it's the headlight harness. And then this guy right here, which is going to for my alternator. Oh, and it's also going to the um, uh, O2 sensors. Let me back up there. So yeah, the only other thing I did have here was a wire harness that went, um, I believe it went down here and into your O2 sensors. So, okay, so that's been pulled. And you can see this is exactly everything that I've already pulled. So normally this stuff is draped in on the, on the, um, on the fender. And you can see the yellow cable, which has now been moved and is plugged in right there. That's the plug I was talking about. So you can disconnect that plug, pull the yellow cable through that hole, and then swing basically this section of the harness in behind the uh, in behind the headlight. That wire going down here. Excuse me, my position is light. This wire right here is my alternate wire. I know that it's gonna to have to be lengthened, that's why it's kind of sitting here right now, because I'm gonna to have to lengthen this, and I'm probably gonna to have to change this wire anyways for the 3G alternator conversion. So, we'll deal with that later. And then the only other thing over here we have is the O2 sensor wire, which is the big cable you're seeing here. So the O2 sensor, let's see if I can get a better camera view on this, guys. So it's been pulled in, and it has been tucked and the whole section down here I've wrapped in electrical tape because it was covered in grease and it's been zip tied there. So this is where the other guys I've talked to have put it. This is where I'm gonna to try to put it. This is gonna give me as much length to the O2 sensors as possible. So if I you know, get a custom exhaust or something, I'll have a little extra room down here. I don't know if this is gonna work or not because I really do not want the wheel um, on a full lock you know, to hit this or hit this connector and tear it up. That would be bad because my engine would just die if it didn't have the O2 sensors. So let's try to get the inner fender back on, see if that works in that location, and then we'll start working on the uh, the driver's side. Mm -hmm. Okay, moving on to the driver's side. So first thing we need to do is just really identify what wires are what. Um, this is a lot easier, obviously, when the motor's in here because you can unplug things. I remember where those, most of the stuff goes. Um, this is my AC wire. This is my AC harness, so we know that goes there. Um, this is obviously a main ground. And this is my um, starter wire and my ground wire, which I've made well. But nonetheless, make sure you take a picture of all this stuff. Make sure you know what goes where. I've already done that. So I've got a good picture on my iPhone of what goes where and taking all different angles of it to make sure you guys know which one of these connectors, where they're all located. So this is not that hard, but we just need to identify all these cables and um, where these go. This is the headlight harness, the main headlight harness that goes here. And yeah, so that's really it. I want to start taking this off. This is the main, or the positive wire the battery terminal that goes to your solenoid. Whenever you turn the key on, it activates it, it sends power to this post down to your starter, and it kicks on. And my ground cable is also quite thick, but it is just laying right here. This goes to the side of your engine block. Okay, when I said get some cutters, by all means, don't cut the wires. That's not what I meant. I need cutters to clip my zip ties. 
This goes to the top post. In fact, what I might do is put a piece of tape on it with an up arrow so on the top. Post on this solenoid. This is by far, this is mostly, this is going to be mostly intimidating for most people just because they're like, oh my god, I'm going to pull those wires out, it's not going to run. And the reality is, you just, if you know where they went, then everything's just going to work. And there's really no way to screw it up, guys. I mean, and on top of this, I'm not going to go full blown out. I'm going to keep this uh, ignition coil here. And really, I'm concerned about moving the starter solenoid, the ground, and this harness, and part of the headline harness here. So most of these cables need to come inside. And we'll just figure out what they do. I've never done this before, of course. So we're doing this together. Post. This is your hot side post. So this is everything that needs power is going to go to this post. And I'm just going to put a plus sign on this so we know. My side. Plus equals hot. Ground wires. So these will also be relocated. Okay, so that's marked on my grounds. I'll probably go ahead and remove the tank. This doesn't work on my car. And I kind of want it to work, so I don't know. It's open, it's in debate, it's been painted over, it doesn't look very good. I could technically steal the one out of the um, out of 89, but this also adds weight to the car. So I'll probably end up just removing it and just know that hey, if I get a bug, I'm not gonna be able to squirt it off. <laughs> Okay, I know to you guys this looks like a big camouflage spaghetti mess, but the idea here is to just kind of identify what wire loom each of these go to. And you can see this is a, t I'm going to have to separate this one with the bolt because this actually goes to a different harness here. This is also on a plug, so this is my main negative cable here. So we'll either relocate that or remove it as well. This just needs to be moved to a good ground on the inside or a direct ground to the cable, battery cable from the back. So that's all I'm doing right now is just kind of separating what harness goes what and where the plugs are up here. So first off, this is the AC relay. We're going to take it underneath with us. Okay. So notice I'm separating everything on this harness right now. This is going to have to be separated, guys. Another good thing about videotaping all this crap is that I can always go back and rewatch it if I screw something up. So this was also a positive. Okay, negative. Okay. Okay, so now we've got this harness separate, and this is ready to go inside the fender well. Okay, so that harness has been identified. We know that this is gonna to have to go to the coil. I do wanna leave the coil here. So it's gonna give me very limited options on what to do with the wire here. I'm gonna know, know that this is to my AC and it's been chewed up. So really needs to be wrapped and fixed, soldered anyways, right there. So we could probably take this off. Okay. AC. Don't want to lose that. Okay, so this entire harness needs to move. Needs to go inside. I don't know what this connector goes to. It's always been bare like this. And man, this is in bad shape. It's nasty. So this is going to have to probably be extended. Okay guys, this is the inside of the driver's fender. So on my 86, you've got, this looks like it's never been opened by the way, this looks really, <laughs> really uh, 
never like untouched which is really kind of cool um, but we got a module here covered in rubber and I believe that is the cruise control module so we got a vacuum line going to it here and we've got a cable going here and that goes to the throttle so man I don't know that because I've never actually had this thing work it'd be kind of cool if it did work so I'm gonna leave it anyways um, this top hose is gonna be to my washer fluid take and it runs along the top side of the fender lip then down right there and down and into the washer tank which is falling down looks like it's about to break Yeah, the washer tank is removed, so it gives us a little bit more room. I like this little crack here. That's a nice touch. Um, but I do want to show you guys just how clean my fenders are. This is a really good sign that there is no Bondo work behind them, and it's all steel. Okay, so I pulled the washer hose out, so it's gone. And I'm going to actually take a second to remove this padding. Um, I'm sure it's Ford put it there for a reason, but it's disintegrating, it's falling apart, and it's going to collect moisture, and in my opinion, this is going to eventually cause rust. So out this nasty thing comes. Whee! Okay, well, good news or bad news? Yeah, there is no good news. It's all bad news, but it's not that bad. Um, so let's check this out, guys. So yesterday, whenever I did the passenger side harness, um... I went ahead and pulled the headlight harness from here all the way around the core and you can see that it's been rewrapped in electrical tape to get rid of that big plastic sheet that was crushed and I ran it behind the evaporator core here um, so that I can hide it and you can see it's nicely hidden you can't even see it from here. Problem is this entire harness snakes through the front headlights. This is majority of the headlight harness so this go, or it is the headlight harness so it goes up to the front this goes to the driver's side and then it snakes across this wire that I rewrapped that I wrapped and actually put it through this hole here and by stock it just came out on the outside of this so guess what I get to do I get to pull all of it out everything I did yesterday I've got to pull out pull completely through and we're gonna have one super long string of headlight harness that we're gonna have to feed through this hole, after much consideration and chatting with some guys on the forums, I think for me, the best thing to do, and I know you guys are gonna flip out when I say this, is to cut the headlight harness so that I can get the front side behind the fender and get, I'm sorry, the back side behind the fender and the front side behind the fender and re-solder it all together to make it whole underneath the car. Now, let me show you why I had to do this and why you, some of you guys without an 86 won't have to do this. The 86 is a little bit unique in that I don't have a hole here that the later Foxes have. And the hole I've got here is the only access hole I've got basically into the inside of the fender. And that's this one right there. And this guy, you can tell it's, it's pretty damn small. And I know for a fact that the connectors to my fog lights, I'm sorry, not the fog lights, the connectors to the parking lamp are about that big. And I'd had to fit two of those through there along with every single other connector and wire and then pull the entire harness out from all the way around the side of the car all the way through and then through this hole and it's just not going to work um, it's not so what I'm going to do is go ahead and move this is the Solnit AC relay harness uh, that I disconnected earlier so I'm going to go ahead and feed that through the hole here to get it onto the bottom side of the car I've also decided to keep the relay here and I'm going to utilize this hole to pretty much feed the relay and the coil and I'm doing that for well mainly because if this goes out just what I went through to get to that fender inner fender off replacing this would be an absolute nightmare so I'm going to keep this here and utilize this hole to access the wires to this and to the coil everything else is going to be gone this is going to be gone and hidden too so it's going to be really well cleaned up I know it's rusty and nasty but anyways that's what I'm going to do ok 
Okay, so got this wire rewrapped here. Makes it quite a bit thinner. And I'm just gonna take each individual side, start feeding it through this hole here. Okay, so that harness is pulled out. The majority of this is gonna go wrap around the top here and just pretty much snake back into here, except for the relay. We'll keep the relay out here. So the relay is gonna go up front here like that. Okay, so a lot of those are gonna go back to the solenoid up front and that one is too and probably go back to the, uh, the stock ground that it went to. And we'll leave that AC relay underneath here because it doesn't need to be seen. Okay, back in the engine bay. Pull these through. Okay, so this is my ground wire. It goes to the battery. These are both negative grounds. That's a negative, and this is a positive. So this goes on this terminal here. Okay. Okay, I've moved the AC relay to a hole that this is able to click into up here. That's a good spot for it. And. I've cleared out the sheathing here, so I've got obviously a good indicator of what wire goes where. I'm going to do one at a time, so I can't screw this up. I hate doing this, guys. Um, I don't know. I could think of a hundred things to try to justify doing this, just to talk myself into it. But I'll be honest, I don't really like doing this. But the alternative is rerunning. It it's literally impossible. This really is the only way I can do this. Um, without you know say creating a, a massive hole behind here and I don't even even that wouldn't work because I'd still have to get those big connectors all the way through all these holes here and back over there so this is 15 wires I'm gonna cut each one of them actually I'm gonna cut all of them because I gotta get the whole harness through I can't do them one at a time so okay I hope you guys can see this okay I'm making sure I'm a little bit colorblind, so I'm making sure all these wires are very different to me. Um, obviously, it's pinky. I'm going to take my gloves off because I don't want to get the wires dirty. We got pink, we got orange and yellow, dark blue. That one looks black, and in fact, these two look the same to me. I'm going to snip these here. Okay, so the only two wires I've got really in question here are these two black ones. So I don't know which one's which. What I'm going to do is, and this is where I lose all my viewers right here. <laughs> Time to get some gloves back on and pull it through and start soldering. Okay, so it is back there and it has a little bit of a twist to it and I'm gonna work on that a little bit more try to get some more room out of it but if I could take the whole harness and just kinda of rotate it I could probably get that bend you know out of there as much as I can um, but it was wrapped around this cable so I didn't think about whenever I threw it through the hole to loop it through underneath this so I actually had to remove the uh, hood latch so I gotta hook that back up and I'm gonna see if there's a way if I can't go ahead and hide the hood latch cable uh, behind the fender as well. What I probably will do is just drill a smaller hole here and then run the hood latch 
on the underside and then out through there to the hood latch. So the hood latch has got to go back on. Um, I don't really want it running across. It kind of runs halfway across the top here and then it goes through the hole right here and then out through here underneath the core support um, the bumper bracket sorry the camera cut off but he has guys I got a lot of work done um, obviously it looks like a looks like hell down here it looks like a mess I know what every wire goes to and I'm not that concerned this is all gonna work just fine when we're done um, this is what has to be soldered back to, to this guy here hey everybody so next day I've got enough room pulled out. I just kind of got enough slack from the back in here. And um, anyways, I'm soldering up these wires. And um, some of the bigger connections I'm using, you know, your uh, your crimp on. But nonetheless, these wires are going to go anywhere. So I've got some heat shrink tubing. It's clear. Whatever. And um, doing one wire at a time, man. Hey okay, guys, so I wrapping some heat shrink over the tube, over the wire. Make a tight physical connection, and then I got an old school soldering gun here. Then I both heat up together here. Okay, so it is done. It is heat shrunk, soldered, and it's wrapped in electrical tape. So this is ready to be zip tied up front. Before we do this though, I know this is going to be a ground connection. And this guy needs to go to the ignition coil. So we're going to go ahead and extend this so that it can reach the hole and actually reach the extension coil. And then we'll work on zip tying all this stuff up in the fender. Okay, I've extended the coil cable quite a bit. I gave myself a little bit of extra room here. This is three wires in here, same deal cut and soldered, heat shrunk, and wrapped with electrical tape. So we're just going to go ahead and place that in there. And we'll go ahead and just plug it in just to get it in place here. Okay guys, back on the driver's side. I know it's nice and dark, but hopefully you can see here. What I've done is let me see if I can position this a little better. Okay. What I've done is ground down a spot right here with bare metal. This is going to become my ground spot. And hopefully that won't interfere with the inner fender. So we will see. If not, I'm going to have to move the ground somewhere else. But this is going to go here. Our ground wires that were originally on this inner fender are going to bolt up here along with these wires here that are also ground wire and this I'm not too much a fan of I think what I'll do is cut this off and put some o-rings on it there and ground those down make sure they're nice and clean so we have nice, nice clean ground then we'll sandwich it all together with another washer here so that everything's got nice clean metal and we should have a nice good ground here for all this stuff to bolt to but hopefully it won't interfere with the um, with an inner fender cover. I'm going to plug the battery in. This is a mess. If you can't notice how much kind of a mess I've created here. I've got the tripod, I've got the electrical stuff, I've got scissors, I got I need to clean up nonetheless. And um, as I pick up some of this mess, I'm going to try to get the battery out. We're going to hook it up and make sure the headlights work. Parking lights are on. Hey, headlights are on. Look at that. Yeah, the fog lights came on, blinkers on, brights are on, yay success, we didn't screw anything up. What's up everybody, hey listen, it's the next day, it's Wednesday, we've been working on this since Sunday, I think. Um, anyways, we're still doing the wire tuck, and I've about got it wrapped up, in fact the wire tuck is actually done. Um, let me show you guys what I have done to complete it. So I just test fit the uh, inner fenders, and... Um, the ground cable or the ground stud that I had right here was just a little bit too long and it was kind of keeping it poked down here. I didn't want the wheel to contact this. And um, I went ahead and just flipped the bolt around. 
So I think that's going to be okay where it's at. Now remember, we're going to run a um, battery relocation kit, and I'm probably going to run the negative cable all the way up to the same area from the back so that it gets a direct ground to these wires and a direct ground to the engine block. So it's going to get ground to the engine block. I'm not going to ground it in the trunk. I want to get a ground all the way from the battery back to the block, and then we'll have a strong ground cable going from the block back to this to this fender here so everything should be nice and grounded this stuff up so i'm going to take these inner fenders out wash them down we'll get some soap and water clean them while they're out there's no point in putting it all back into the car right now because the battery location kit's going to have to run my battery cables to the trunk so that wraps up the video on the wire tuck um it's not a complete how-to, we're not completely done yet, because we still have to rerun the battery lines to the back to the battery location kit. But as far as a wire tuck goes, I hope this video somewhat helps you out. If you guys are gonna do this to your car, you can kind of see what I went through. It's not exactly straightforward, and it changes depending on what year Mustang you have. They're all a little bit different. My 86 is different. So if you plan on wire tucking your 86, I hope this video helps you out. Um, if anything, maybe, maybe it's entertaining, maybe it's informative, I don't know, but that's it. So guys, thank you so much for watching. We'll see you next time. Stay tuned for so much more to come. So we'll be putting in the battery location kit. The rolling thing I will do in degrease and uh, prep and paint on the engine bay. And then we're going to get ready to drop this motor in. So stay tuned. Thank y'all for watching. In this room, the boomer soon as this woman turns to ashes. The